it is a uh, it is a, a real adventure for us to try to have some of our big activities, our national activities like this one, in different our different regions. So we're starting slowly but surely, and welcome. So we are here thanks to um, um, Mr. Ali Hanas, who is the director here. Should have been with us, I suppose, but he's unable to be with us. And so just to uh, welcome us to the university, I'd like to call Laurie Turner. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. So I'm Laurie Turner, and I uh, manage the uh, English department here at Idrak Lyon. Uh, and EDRAC is part of the, this whole building is called the René Cassin campus. And for those of you who don't know, there are 15 schools in this building. And EDRAC's the biggest one. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but there are 14 others and we all uh, share the same space and that's why we're able to have a pretty nice building with this nice auditorium. And EDRAC's really happy to uh, sponsor TESOL and make this all possible and, and thank you for coming and making it possible because if there's no one here, uh, it wouldn't be so great. So I hope you have a great day. Unfortunately, there's some kind of big traffic jam uh, out there in Lyon and I think there's gonna be a lot of uh, walk-ins. Uh, so uh, have a great day and there's uh, myself uh, and Sandra Ricardez and Ian Hall uh, are also on hand to help you. I have a few of my teachers back there too uh, uh, who will help you if you need any assistance in the building. And once again, thanks for coming and uh, have a great day. So um, we are also here on behalf of, thanks to our supporters, Cambridge University Press, British Council Lyon and British Council France, and EF Education First. Now, I uh, have the real privilege of introducing you to our first speaker, who is Russell, I'll just call him Russell, because we have a little story together. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, I, the first time I met Russell, he was, um, we were both at, in Spain, in Iada, and we were taking the, the train train back to Barcelona, yeah, yeah. to take the train and the plane, etc. So I had a great opportunity of being cozy with him. But he's really incredible. Uh, you'll learn a lot, so be ready to write fast. And uh, click onto your um, computers. If you haven't clicked on yet, um, there's a Wi-Fi code on the last page of the program. So, but before we have Russell start, uh, Chilla has a little something to tell you. And then we'll begin. So, You'll notice that in the program, so we're a little bit behind, but we have breaks, and we're going to have lunch, etc. Okay? And I'll see you later this afternoon. So, welcome everybody again. But my little story is a story which brings together Russell, Lori, and uh, Tissot Friends, and myself. And this is the story how I got involved in TESOL France and how I got involved in being interested in technology and using technology in teaching. The very first time I went to a TESOL workshop in our local branch, uh, at our local branch in Grenoble, which was led by Marianne Rhino back then, I met Lori Turner who gave a talk and she talked about technology and she talked about Russell Standard. And I took notes and I wrote down website uh, www.teachertrainingvideos.com, Russell Stannard, he's just been nominated and got awarded with the Elton's Award for Technology by British Council. So I was very excited, I went home and I said, well, this, friends, this is a great thing because you learn fabulous things there from fabulous teachers, let's see what's happening on this website. And then I met Russell Stannard's website and I said, wow. <laughs> And then I signed up, and ever since, it was, I think, four years ago, uh, every month I receive a beautiful tutorial, a series of tutorials to learn about Quizlet, to learn about a lot of things that you will learn about today. And then it just got me engaged with doing research, being interested in how we teach, why we teach, and TESOL France is there to 
help you with this type of meetings, encounters that can start a journey and we'll see where the journey takes us. So this is a starting point for all those people who are in this room. And thank you very much, Russell. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, I'm going to divide the, the, the session today into two parts. And the first part, I'm going to look at collaboration, different ways of getting our students to collaborate and share together. And I'm going to show you a couple of tools. I'm going to try and be really ambitious. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. You're in an auditorium, you're all connected up to Wi-Fi. We might find it a bit frustrating, but it's always worth a try. So for the first part, I plan to do it totally hands-on. In other words, I'm going to show you things, get you to do them, and we're going to set up exercises. If it really gets frustrating, then for the second part, I'll change to a kind of more formal presentation mode. But if I can get you to work with these tools, it would be fantastic. Um, if it doesn't work, don't be put off. This is a really difficult situation to work in, often when you're working in a, an auditorium and I'm standing at the front. And of course, I wouldn't normally use these technologies in a lesson. A lot of the things I'm going to show you would be very much about what I would do with the students outside of the class, extending the learning. That's a key part of what technology is about. So I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best to show you really easy tools to use. And please, you know, one of the things about my website, about everything I'm trying to do, is I'm particularly interested in people who are not engaging that much with technology. In other words, I'm really looking at, I'm quite technophobic myself, and I know that a lot of people do struggle with technology, I and mean, I still struggle with it even now. And so obviously what I'm saying is, if you've got any questions or any problems on the most obvious thing, please don't feel really embarrassed to say, Russell, it's not working or I can't do it. We'll see how far we can get, and I've got a plan B if I need to put one into, into place, okay? But we've got a microphone, get you to do questions. I'm going to try my absolute best to, to make this co as collaborative as possible. And I'm going to start straight away with an activity. Um, some of the activities I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to set up the activity in a secure way if you are going to do it with your students. Some of the activities that I'm going to show you, I'm going to do them in a bit more of an open way just because of speed, just because I, I don't want you logging in all the time. So I'll set up activities that you can do without logging in. But please keep in mind, and we will talk about this, so obviously that security is a key issue and I will, I will bring it up at certain, at certain points. I'm going to start with a quick activity and let me just show you why. Okay, Are you, can you hear me okay, yeah? Imagine we're in a classroom scenario and we've got our groups of students, okay? Let's just imagine this. Okay, this could be at home as well, but let's, let's imagine that we're in a group scenario. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. We're in a group scenario and we've got uh, the students working in groups, okay? Now, one of the things is if we've got discussions going on, let's imagine we've got a lesson, we've set up a discussion with our students and we've got four or five students working here, four or five students working here, four or five here, four or five here, etc. We're the teacher, we're moving around the classroom, we're listening to the discussion, okay? Taking notes, maybe intervening a little bit depending on, on, on our kind of teaching style. We often miss a lot of information, and this group doesn't really know what that group said, this group doesn't know what that group said. And of course, we can get the students to sum up, we can say to a student, okay, can you just tell us what did your group say, and then go around to another group. But we know in reality that really we don't get a lot from that. We do get a bit, but often um, the total sort of amount of learning that's taken place and the ideas that have been generated, we can't, we can't collect them all. So one thing I like about collaboration tools is the way that we can set up channels, and I'm going to do this in an open way, and then I'll show you a more controlled way of doing it, but we can set up a channel where, imagine that we've got the students working in three or fours, just one student needs to be connected to a computer within the group, just one. And if that student is basically typing what the key points that this group are saying, we can make them connect it to one feed. And I can project that feed onto the screen. And so everybody's ideas will come on the screen here. And so that, and then I can print that out, 
I could use that. So these kind of collaboration tools are really nice because they're, they're the sort of start of this collaboration, constructing, building knowledge, building ideas, brainstorming kind of stuff that we're talking about a lot now. You probably hear it, it slipped into language teaching now, sort of the work of Vygotsky and constructivism and stuff like that. I kind of like this, at so whatever level, you either take it at just a sharing level, brainstorming level, or the idea of constructing knowledge and building ideas. So I'm going to show you a tool that can do that for you. I'm going to do this in a very open way, okay, we're all adults in the room, so rather than set up as a secure activity, I'm going to do it really, really freely, but I will show you how we could make this more secure as well. For this first activity, can I ask you, because there's some of you sitting on your own, I'd be really interested if everybody could work in, a, if I was to work in the class with technology, and I'm going to emphasise that I don't use a lot of technology in the class, I tend to be using the technology outside of the class more. If I've got the students in the class and they're in a face-to-face -face situation, I don't need to use technology, you can even disrupt the lesson. But where I'm more interested in, you'll see today, a lot of things I'm going to suggest about how we can extend the learning outside the class. But can I ask you to work in pairs, at least in pairs? Could you try and sit with somebody and for each pair of three, just one computer, just one computer for this first activity. It's not going to work if you're sitting on your own. Can I ask you to work in twos or threes? and just need one computer for this first activity, okay? Just one computer for this first activity. Can I all ask you all to log on to that website? I just want you to turn on your internet and go to that page. And when you get there, do not do anything. All right, just go to the page and wait for my instructions. If you use this activity in your class, if you do this in your class, and I do it all the time, then what you'll find is, yeah, the first time you do it, there'll be a bit of disruption because the students don't know what you're doing, but afterwards then they'll just use it all the time. I've been using this tool for about five years. Nothing I'm going to show you today I haven't done myself in the class, okay? Um, 